Hi everyone, this is Maverick Park, the Chemistry Guru. Now in the topic on solubility product, we know that the solubility product or KSP is the equilibrium constant involving a dissociation of a sparingly soluble salt. But interestingly, there's another term called the ionic product, which looks very similar to solubility product. So in this video, we want to spend a bit of time to discuss the difference between solubility product and ionic product and the application of this concept. All right, so let's use the dissociation of calcium hydroxide as an example. So if you have a beaker of water and you put in a little bit of calcium hydroxide, and we know that it is a sparingly soluble salt, or it is actually not very soluble. So what this means is a tiny amount of the salt will dissolve into solution to give me a tiny amount of Ca2 plus and a tiny amount of OH minus. So in terms of writing this out in an equation, you look something like this, CaOH2, reversible because this is a sparingly soluble salt so most of it actually will exist in a solid state we only have a tiny amount of ca2 plus equals and a tiny amount of oh minus equals so this will give me caoh2 reversible sign to give me ca2 plus and 2 oh minus now in terms of writing down the equilibrium constant or solubility product it is pretty straightforward because we know that an equilibrium constant will just be an expression in terms of the concentration of the product raised to the power of the coefficient over the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So the KSP for the dissociation of calcium hydroxide, it will be the concentration of Ca2 plus power 1, which will be this term here, multiplied by the concentration of OH minus square, because the coefficient for OH minus in this case is 2. So this will be OH minus concentration square by right. An equilibrium constant, we need to divide this by the concentration of the reactant raised to the power of the coefficient. But for the dissociation of a sparingly soluble salt, because the reactant, it is always a solid. So therefore, the concentration of the solid, we know that it is a constant term and it doesn't appear in the Kc expression. So therefore, it doesn't appear in the Ksp expression or rather it is part of the Ksp expression because the concentration of a solid, it is a constant term. So Ksp will just be the concentration of the ions raised to the power of the coefficient. So it will be Ca2 plus concentration power 1 times OH minus square term. Now what is the meaning of Ksp? I think this idea is important because we need to compare this against ionic product. Now solubility product, since it is an equilibrium constant, it only applies to a system that is at equilibrium. That's why we put a subscript here. We say that this is the concentration of Ca2 plus at equilibrium. This is the concentration of OH minus square only at equilibrium. So for the dissociation of a sparingly soluble salt, when is the system at equilibrium? It is only at equilibrium when we are talking about a saturated solution. Now, because when the solution is saturated, the concentration of the ions in solution it is a maximum and constant and it doesn't change anymore. So therefore, the system is at equilibrium when the solution is saturated. So KSP is measuring the concentration of ions inside a saturated solution. So therefore, this relationship it is very important. KSP only applies to a saturated solution, which will represent the maximum amount of ions that the solution can handle. How much ions you can keep inside the solution, it is being measured by this term called KSP. And of course, KSP, since this is an equilibrium constant, it is supposed to be a constant term if there's no change in temperature. So we know that KSP, it is a constant. And we know that for a saturated solution, the maximum amount of ions that the solution can handle at a particular temperature, it should remain constant. Now, how about ionic product? Now, if I want to write out the ionic product in terms of the same dissociation involving calcium hydroxide to give me Ca2 plus and 2 OH minus, interestingly, the ionic product will look exactly the same as solubility product. It will also be equal to the concentration of the product raised to the power of the coefficient over the concentration of the reactant raised to the power of the coefficient. So ionic product in this case will be Ca2 plus concentration power 1. OH minus concentration square term. Again, because the reactant, it is a solid, the concentration of a solid, it is a constant term. It doesn't appear in the ionic product expression. Ionic product will just be Ca2 plus concentration multiplied by OH minus concentration square. Now, if ionic product and solubility product looks exactly the same, then what is the difference between the two terms? KSP measures the concentration of ions for a saturated solution, while ionic product measures the concentration of ions for any solution or for the actual solution. So for ionic product, it is a little bit more general. Depending on the actual amount of ions in solution, then I can work out this expression, then this will be the ionic product. 
So ionic product actually it measures the actual amount of ions that is inside this actual solution. So therefore it will vary depending on how much ions we have. If I have very little ions in solution, then ionic product will be small. If I have a lot of ions in solution, then of course we will expect the ionic product to be big. So IP will vary even at a particular temperature because it actually depends on how much ions that we are putting this into the solution. All right, now that we know the difference between ionic product and solubility product, then the most direct application that we usually use will be using ionic product and we compare this against solubility product to predict whether is there any precipitation involving that particular solution. So usually what I prefer to do is since ionic product will vary, while KSP it is a constant term, then we need to know the relationship between IP versus KSP. So how I visualize IP is IP it is a number line because it can vary, while KSP it is a specific point along this number line. So we can visualize this here. In this case, this is my number line, and this will be my ionic product. And remember ionic product, it is related to ion concentration because the less ions I have, the smaller the concentration of the ions, so the smaller the IP value, but the more ions I have inside the solution, the concentration of the ions in solution will go up, so therefore IP would also increase. So IP will vary, so therefore it is the number line, and along this number line, there's one specific point, which is the KSP. So KSP, it is an actual point along this number line. So that is the relationship between IP versus KSP. Now if I compare IP versus KSP, the most direct comparison it is at this instance here when IP is equal to KSP. Now remember IP talks about the actual amount of ions in solution. KSP talks about the maximum amount of ions in solution. So let's say for example, if I have a solution and this solution maximum only has four slots, so it can keep only four ions. And if we just nice give it four ions, so all the ions will be able to be dissolved into the solution because I have enough space for all the ions to be dissolved. And you notice it is a maximum, no more salt can dissolve. So inside this scenario, we know that this is the maximum the solution can go. Maximum we can put four, and inside there we actually give it four ions. And if I try to put any more salt, I know that the additional salt that we put in cannot be dissolved anymore because there's no more space. I know that the precipitation would come up. So of course, this is what we call a saturated solution because I know that actual is equal to maximum. So this is a saturated solution. And usually if the solution it is just nice saturated, we don't expect any precipitation to take place. But we know that if I add a little bit more salt, then the precipitation will occur because there's no more slots left for me to dissolve the ions. So this is for IP equal to KSP. Now how about on the left hand side where we have IP less than KSP. Now again, IP less than KSP, actual less than maximum. It means this particular scenario, if maximum I have four slots. Remember KSP, which measures the maximum amount of ions in solution. In general, it doesn't change unless you change the temperature. So consistently inside this example, the total number of slots for the solution will be four slots which measures the KSP. So if maximum number of slots we have is four, now I give it two ions in solution. Now if I give it only two ions in solution, then of course everything can be dissolved into the solution. And if I continue to add more salt, then by right I would expect more salt to be able to dissolve because I still have all this space left for me to dissolve more salt. So this is what we call a diluted solution. The solution is hanging on to less ions that it can handle. I can hang on to four, you only give me two. I still have space available to dissolve more salt. So this solution, it is a diluted solution. Of course, if it is diluted, then there's no precipitation. So this will be IP less than KSP. Now on the right hand side, it is the one which is interesting, IP more than KSP. Now remember IP greater than KSP, it means that actual amount of ions in solution is more than the maximum amount of ions that the solution can handle. If the solution can handle four, you give it six ions, so you're giving it more ions than it can handle. Now usually this occurs when IP greater than KSP. It occurs when you have a separate source of cation and a separate source of anion and you mix the two solutions together. On the instance of mixing, we can calculate what happens to ionic product. And if ionic product exceeds solubility product or IP is greater than KSP, then you'll be this particular scenario where the solution is hanging on to more ions that it can handle. So if you only have four slots in the solution but you're given six, then what would the solution do? Because 
We say that this solution is super saturated. It is hanging on to more ions that it can handle. It doesn't stay super saturated. The excess amount of ions that it cannot handle has to be precipitated. So when IP exceeds KSP, we expect precipitation to occur. And how much PPT would come out? Actually, it is quite intuitive. If I cannot handle six ions, and I can only handle four ions, what I will do is I will precipitate two. So this portion here will be the part that is being precipitated. The two ions that I cannot keep inside solution will be precipitated. Then I'll be left with a saturated solution and I can hang on to the remaining four ions in solution. So as mentioned previously, if my maximum amount of slots is four and you give me six, what I cannot do is I cannot handle all of them, but there's no need for me to precipitate all the six ions. What I will do is I will just keep four inside solution, which is the maximum, and the remaining two ions that I cannot keep inside solution will be precipitated. So when I have a scenario where IP exceeds KSP, and I know that there's precipitation because the solution is super saturated. It cannot hang on to all this excess amount of ions. So all these excess ions will be precipitated and we will be left with a saturated solution plus the PPT, which represents the amount of ion that it cannot keep inside solution. All right, so that was the discussion involving the difference between ionic product and solubility product and using IP versus KSP to predict precipitation. If you have learned something useful from this video, Please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.